Good evening and welcome to the virtual college exploration for all North and South Carolina students sponsored by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers or CACRO and Strivescan. Thank you for joining us this evening. We want to take care of a few housekeeping items before we get started. You can utilize the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to the presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening through this StriveScan CACRO partnership, so be sure to check out the full schedule on CACRO's website at cacro.org. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week after the session has concluded on CACRO's website. I'd now like to turn it over to our presenters so that they can begin their session. Guys, uh, my name is Joe Hughes. Uh, I am the assistant director at USC Aiken. Um, I just want to welcome you guys. Um, I'll let everybody else here introduce themselves as well. Uh, we do have three of the awesomest universities uh, in South Carolina here. Uh, Aiken is one of those. Uh, I'll pass it over to Matt. Hey, I'm Matt Cash, Assistant Director of Admission at the University of South Carolina, Beaufort. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Eric Chapman. I am uh, our Assistant Director for Freshman Enrollment at USC Upstate. Awesome. Thanks, guys. So uh, just before we kind of dive into a little bit, uh, most of everything, we're just going to talk about a little bit here about uh, who we are um, as a collective university system um, and then kind of just dive into individually uh, what we are um, on a Aiken Buford and Upstate basis. So uh, the USC system itself is actually broken into um, eight different schools. So you have uh, USC Columbia, you have USC Aiken, USC Buford, um, Upstate, uh, is our four-year options. Uh, Columbia is considered a research institution. Uh, Aiken, Buford, and Upstate are more considered to be the uh, comprehensive universities uh, in the system. Um, and then you have your two years, uh, your Union, your Lancaster, your Sumter, and your Salkahatchee. Uh, so just kind of get a, a breakdown of that. So no matter what level of education or style that you're looking for um, inside the USC system, I uh, feel confident we can find something for you. Um, a lot of the differences you'll notice uh, here between the three of us are very minimal. Um, a lot of it is going to be based off of location, uh, where we're at, uh, some of the majors and different things uh, that we have to offer as well. Um, but, you know, I, I feel confident uh, in saying that all three of us um, are, are going to get offer you as a student a very well-rounded education um, and a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention, which is kind of what uh, we are we're known for. So. I'm going to dive into a little bit of uh, who we are as USC Aiken. All right, so all right, so uh, here uh, gets to know us a little bit. Uh, we have about a 3,700 student population. Uh, probably about 3,200 or so of those are going to be your undergrads. Uh, so our incoming class is around six to 700 uh, freshmen every year. Uh, so obviously we want to grow that. So we want you to come and join us. Um, about 31% of our uh, enrollment is going to be minorities. Uh, we also have about a 50, I think it's 68% uh, female ratio. Uh, so that's a, a positive as well. Um, we have over 100 plus different organizations. Uh, to me, this is one of my favorite aspects of our campus. Uh, we can really start uh, anything you want. So if there's something that you have that you're used to now that doing, uh, you can't find it on our campus for whatever reason, um, really all you have to do is come find a faculty and staff uh, on campus uh, to be your sponsor, and we'll get you, we'll get you started. A great example of that um, is something that we, we have here. We have a, a gaming uh, eSports team. It actually just started out as something – a few kids hanging around, uh, TVs in our SAC, which is our Student Activity Center, just hanging out there. Um, you know, just somebody from Student Life came out and said, hey, guys, why don't you start a club or an organization? You know, they're like, ah, I'm not really sure about that. They're like, well, you're, you'll get some money to buy some new games. And, oh, okay, yeah, that's great. Let's sign you up. So they did it. Uh, they actually found a sponsor that was uh, actually a, a video gamer himself, uh, one of our professors. Um, and he started looking into it, and he said, you know what, we can do this for – you know, as a competitive sport. Uh, so we actually have, you know, within the last few years, uh, have moved that up into a, uh, one of our club sports. Uh, and we actually won the Peach Belt uh, regular season 
and tournament championship this year. So it really kind of shows you the level uh, here where you can, if, if you have an idea, you have a passion that you want to get started, uh, we're going to help you from kind of top to bottom, uh, whether that's inside the classroom or outside the classroom. So going to back to inside the classroom, we do have um, over 50 different um, undergrad programs of study. Uh, actually, let's go back. So these are just some of our, our student uh, clubs and organizations that we do, we do offer. Uh, we have uh, fraternities and sororities, different arts, honor society, intramurals, but there's plenty of things to keep you busy in your free time. So um, athletics, uh, I did mention uh, eSports is one of our uh, club sports, but um, obviously equestrian is gonna be pretty popular on our campus, uh, being that uh, a horse is our mascot. So uh, it's big into this area. So if you're in horses, definitely Aiken is a great option for you. Uh, lacrosse is actually pretty popular. We're looking in 2022 to push that into an NCAA sport. Uh, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, but our men's and women's basketball teams are all um, nationally ranked. Our men's basketball team made it all the way to number four in the nation uh, the last full season. Uh, baseball is typically in the top 10 every year. Uh, softball is very strong. Volleyball is uh, up there as well. And golf actually has three national championships. So uh, very competitive sports. Um, all of our fields are centrally located right here on campus, which is very nice. Uh, you know, I can go from my office. I can go from class. I can go from wherever. Uh, from one spot to the next and you know easily just walk um, and that's kind of one of the beautiful things that I love about our campus is really just the fact that I can walk from one side of campus to the other side of campus in about five minutes um, so everything is centrally located around our quad um, so we have the ability to just really hop hop between buildings uh, enjoy the peacefulness and beautifulness of the outside area and kind of go from there so now we'll dive into our programs of study. Um, you know, this is to me uh, is, is where, where the meat is on the bone, right? Uh, business Magistration uh, is actually, a, they're one of our award-winning uh, new U.S. News and World Report uh, winning majors on campus. Uh, nursing is probably one of our most popular. Uh, we do have a, um, one of the highest uh, in the state in class exam, first time pass rates at 98%. We do have 100% um, job placement prior to graduation for our nursing students, uh, which is very awesome. Uh, you know, you want to be able to get in there uh, and, and graduate and, um, and kind of have that job lined up. Uh, most of our graduates have about six to eight different uh, job opportunities out there, uh, which is very fitting for this area. Uh, you know, one of the, we have the highest uh, rate of uh, hospitals that we have uh, for our nurses to actually to, to attend. Uh, we have eight different hospitals uh, that you can do rotations in, including the National Burn Center, um, a Children's Hospital, uh, the VA. So we have a lot of options uh, for you as nurses, um, but we do that with all of our majors. Uh, you know, one of the big parts of our campus is just the fact that we want you to be um, doing your internships for whatever major it is. You know, we look at um, internships as a long job study. Um, you know, there's a long uh, interview, excuse me, a long job interview. And so we want you to, to get out there, uh, experience uh, what it is to do that job, but doing it in the light, knowing that, hey, these people are hopefully hiring you uh, when you graduate. Uh, so we're looking at that. Um, industrial process engineering is growing. Uh, applied gaming is actually one of our new ones in cybersecurity uh, is growing tremendously. Uh, the South Carolina National Guard is building the uh, South Carolina Cybersecurity Center right here on our campus. Uh, so we're excited about that. Um, and the National Cybersecurity Center is only about 15 miles from us as well. So uh, if you're into computers, uh, whether it's applied gaming or cybersecurity or just general coding, uh, that is a huge booming industry in our area. So um, but feel free to ask questions, guys. Um, when I finish with this, I'll try to answer them. Um, going back to kind of our experiment or learning, we talked about this with our internships. We do have research built into almost every single major, um, especially our science majors. Study abroad is very popular as well, um, but then your skills lab. We do a lot of hands-on, uh, which is one of the benefits to me of a smaller uh, university. Um, you have your small classroom size, uh, which uh, falls right into that as well. You get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention from your professors, uh, which is what you want. You want to be able to ask questions to your professors, uh, have them answer you as well. Um, you know, I think that's something that you miss from a large large campus, you have two, 300 people in a classroom. Uh, you really, it's just a lecture style. 
you miss a lot of that interaction. So uh, for us, uh, we do have a smaller classroom size. Our average classroom size is only about 15 students. 98% um, of our classes, they max out at 25 to 30 students. Uh, we only have one style of class that has more than that. And they cap out at about 55 to 60 students. So uh, outside of that one uh, class setting, everyone else is gonna be about 25 to 30 student max. But again, you're gonna be averaging about 15 students. This gives you a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with your professor. Uh, I mean, you think about it, they're the smartest people in the room, hopefully. And you wanna be able to just ask them questions, dive into that knowledge that they're offering you, and uh, just come out the other side, uh, just more, you know, more well-rounded, more uh, intuitive. So, so uh, a couple of other things about our campus. Uh, we do have uh, you know, housing, obviously, is, is very popular on our campus. Uh, you have very spacious rooms, uh, meal plans, nice variety of meal plans. Uh, dining hall has a all-you-can-eat style. Um, calf, which is very good, actually, lunch there today. Um, so I eat there probably two, three times a week. Just love the variety, love the quality of the food. And then there's always stuff going around campus to do, uh, whether it's swimming in the swimming pool or, uh, you know, just hanging out in the quad. All right, so just real quick. So this current year, uh, this is where we are tuition-wise. I ran around $5,200 uh, for you guys who will be in state, uh, which is about the lowest in the state, right around it. Uh, housing meal plans are pretty low as well. Uh, so all that, that that meal plan price rather is, is included as far as an all you can eat style. So you can eat up to eight different meals a day, uh, which is a lot of food. Uh, if you can eat that much, that's awesome. Uh, if not, um, that's probably a better option for you. You know, you don't want to be gaining the freshman 15, uh, you know, in the first week. So, uh, but hit up the meal plan, hit the housing. Uh, if you guys have questions around it, just kind of give you an idea. I'm going to leave this up here for half a second. Um, but just kind of give you an idea of price comparison, to some other institutions in the state. Uh, we do offer 90% of our uh, students end up receiving some type of federal merit or state aid. So that is all I have as far as the presentation. Uh, slideshow goes. Um, I did not stop changing. And I will uh, pass it over to Matt. And I'll look forward to your questions and answer our questions in the, the, um, the drop down box. Feel free to ask them at any point in time and I will answer them for you. Hey, good evening. Again, everyone, I am Matt Cash, Assistant Director of Admission at USC Beaufort, your senior campus of the University of South Carolina system, uh, located in the Sea Islands of South Carolina. So up on the screen right now, you'll have my contact information. We'll be sharing uh, um, everyone's contact information again at the end of the screen, so don't feel rushed to write this down right now. Um, so just to give you a broad overview of USCB, we trace our history back to the 1795 founding of Beaufort College, uh, which makes us one of the oldest college traditions in the state of South Carolina. Um, in 1959, we joined the University of South Carolina system, and then in 2004 is when we really started rapid expansion uh, once we gained four-year university status. That is when we uh, opened our main campus in Bluffton, uh, which is on the Hilton Head Gateway. Um, in 2018 and 2019, very recent years, we've seen lots of tremendous growth, um, including the revitalization of our Beaufort campus, as well as our Hilton Head Island campus for hospitality management students. So student makeup, you're looking at about 2,100 students total, uh, representing 36 states and 10 countries. So although we are one of the, uh, we are the smallest of the four year senior campuses to the University of South Carolina system, we offer um, large university, huge university benefits. We're one of the, we've recently been recognized as one of the top producing uh, uh, institutions of Fulbright scholars amongst our faculty members. Um, our visual arts students compete for studio space um, at the undergraduate level, which is very hard to come by. Nursing students are um, participating in clinicals at trauma level hospitals hospitals, and then students can conduct research projects alongside faculty members, and some have ultimately been published uh, for, their, uh, for their contributions there. Um, and so lots of, lots of opportunities amongst those. Over a thousand students live on campus, uh, so we have a high ratio of students that are uh, living on campus with us, so it's not necessarily like a uh, what you might hear 
as a suitcase campus or a commuter campus or something along those lines. So we are fully residential. Student to faculty ratio is 16 to one, so it's a very close knit learning environment. Uh, we offer over 40 different clubs and organizations, which is a huge number for an institution of our size. So that's everything from uh, political groups and Greek life, fraternities and sororities and that type of thing over to academic honor societies as well. Uh, we do compete in the NAI um, and field nine different athletic teams. So uh, we do have three different locations with USCB, um, and you can see we're, uh, we're about an hour and 15 minutes uh, down the coast from Charleston and about 30 minutes from Savannah, Georgia. So our main campus is in Bluffton, so it's a 200-acre uh, campus situated right on the Hilton Head Gateway. Um, we have 10 different residence halls, uh, multiple dining options on campus. Uh, as well as a, a 20,000 foot campus center, which is the hub of student life, um, and then a 26,000 foot recreation center as well. So our location in downtown Beaufort is located right on the Beaufort River waterfront in uh, historic Beaufort. Um, it is home to our Beaufort College Honors Program. Uh, we also house our history major, marine biology, and visual art and design majors um, on that uh, at that campus as well. Um, and then, like I mentioned earlier, we recently opened our Hilton Head Island, uh, which is our uh, campus, which is our Center for Hospitality Management. It is designed to be a working event and conference center. Uh, so lots of hands-on experience for students that might be interested in a business-related field, but maybe they want to focus their talents more on uh, the tourism, retail, uh, international hotel industry, and that type of thing, seeing as how it is one of the leading industries in South Carolina. It also comes equipped with a beverage lab and demonstration kitchen too. Um, so this is a listing of all the majors that we offer. So we offer about 30 different programs of study uh, by the time you factor in the various concentration areas that you can choose uh, to focus in. So we're broken up into three main parts. So you have the School of Humanities and Social Sciences. So that's going to cover everything from um, English and maybe teaching English to visual art design, social sciences like psychology, sociology, human services, um, maybe if you're interested in a career in print or broadcast journalism or public relations, communication studies would be a good fit for you as well. Um, so School of Science and Mathematics is one of the most popular. So that covers everything from our biology program, uh, which has various concentration areas in marine biology and coastal ecology and conservation uh, due to our proximity of uh, uh, to the, uh, to the waterfront, uh, both through uh, local marshes, estuaries, and the coast itself. Uh, lots of in-the-field research opportunities with that if you're interested in um, the, uh, the paths of um, uh, watershed ecology and that type of thing. Um, so we also offer some computer science related programs in computational science and information science and technology, um, as well as mathematics programs. And again, we offer some secondary education tracks if you're interested in teaching at the high school level for biology and math. Um, and again, some very popular programs amongst our School of the Professions. Uh, so we do offer a business administration degree um, where you can choose a, a concentration in either accounting, management, or marketing. Uh, we have early childhood and elementary education, as well as uh, one, another one of those niche programs in hospitality uh, management. Uh, there's also nursing and public health. Nursing is a very technologically advanced facility as well, complete with animatronic simulation labs um, and that type of thing too. So lots of hands-on experience across all of our programs. Uh, we do pride ourselves on experiential learning. Um, so uh, you learn through experience best and we want to make sure that you are learning from leaders in their field um, in the form of our faculty members. Um, so we also have a list of our minors up here. Now I won't re read through all those but some of you might be interested in our pre-professional tracks. Um, these are going to be the programs that might better help prepare you for graduate level study. If you're wanting to go on to graduate level study in medicine, in law, or something along those lines, we do offer programs there as well. Um, the only one that isn't designed as a graduate school program is the pre-engineering track, and that is actually set up as a joint advisement track to the University of South Carolina Columbia campus um, to where students can begin their studies with us, um, and then uh, transition to the Columbia campus to, uh, to complete their degree there and then pursue graduate level education. 
So to give you a broad overview, uh, like I said earlier, we are a fully residential campus. Uh, so our housing isn't uh, necessarily dorm style or suite style living. Think of it as traditional apartment style living. So it's four bedroom, two bathroom apartments, um, and that's for freshmen all the way through upperclassmen. All the housing is pretty much set up the same. Um, so each person has their own individual bedroom within there, um, and then a separate bathroom and shower area where it's just two roommates sharing, uh, sharing those facilities as well. Full kitchens, full living rooms, um, all major appliances are included as well, plus there is a washer and dryer in each apartment, so there's not a central laundry location where people are log jammed in there trying to, uh, trying to uh, fold clothes and such. Um, so, uh, with student programming and clubs and organizations, uh, we have a tremendous focus on keeping students active and engaged while they're on campus. Uh, so that's going to be in the forms of our student life office and students putting together concerts, um, you know, comedians and, and any, kind of, any number of guest speakers on campus. And again, over 40 different clubs and organizations that are led by students um, um, in that as well. Uh, campus recreation, uh, that 26,000 foot recreation center I mentioned earlier has all the auxiliary courts for our intramural fields um, as well as club sports. Then there's also our student weight room and fitness studio in there as well. So all that's included in your tuition. So um, there's also opportunities for like group classes, yoga um, and group fitness, that type of thing. And again, I mentioned earlier our NAIA Sun Conference uh, competition athletics where we field nine different sports programs. Um, some of the resources that we offer uh, to help students uh, along as they transition into uh, university life um, is our Student Success Center. Um, so that houses academic advising. Now those are going to be the folks that help you register for classes for your first year um, and make sure that you're taking the right classes as either you have already declared a major or if you're undecided and you might need a little help with course selection. Um, we also have our Career Services Office. Now that's a great resource whether you're looking for on-campus or off-campus employment while you're a student, they compile databases of those, but they are also the office that will help prepare you for um, life after graduation as well. So we're talking uh, resume writing skills, um, we're talking mock interviews, um, helping with job placement. They also host graduate school fairs as well to where they'll bring in like the medical schools and the law schools and that type of thing um, to, to host a, a fair for that type of thing. Uh, we also offer an Office of Counseling and Accessibility Services, too. Um, so that is going to be a, a great resource, um, especially in, in this time where students, if they need additional support, um, whether in the form of uh, someone to talk to um, or anything along those lines, we have a very active office for that that's uh, very responsive to our students. So we're going to jump into just a little bit of the admission requirements. Uh, so after submitting the online application, um, students actually can upload their, uh, their high school transcript along with their application, and uh, we will accept that uh, for evaluation. Uh, we are test optional this year, so we do not require students to take the SAT or the ACT. This is not something you need a special waiver for. Um, it's just not a required item on your admissions checklist. So we will basically be making our admissions decisions for uh, the incoming freshman class uh, for fall 21 um, off of your high school transcript. Now, if you think you may need uh, test scores in order to qualify for state funded scholarships, then definitely you'll want to make sure that you submit those uh, to us, but it will not hold up the initial admissions evaluation side of things. So some popular scholarships uh, in the form of institutional dollars that we offer uh, will be our PLUS scholarships. So Life PLUS and Palmetto Fellows PLUS, if you are eligible and a South Carolina resident uh, for either of those state funded scholarships, then we have an additional $2,000 that we can award you on top of the funds that come from the state in the form of that scholarship. And you can continue to maintain eligibility for that scholarship up to all four years of attendance, as long as you maintain the initial requirements to keep the state funded. Uh, portion of that scholarship. Um, that is on a first come first serve basis. So we definitely encourage early action um, on the uh, on the part of your application uh, to make sure that you uh, to get the best shot at additional scholarships. Now, if you were listening to us from out of state, um, we do offer a residential scholarship as well. Uh, so this is for non South Carolina residents to where if you graduate high school with a 3.0 GPA, or if you're on a 100 point scale uh, in North Carolina, that's fine too. Whatever you can is considered to be a B average at your school. You have a 1050 on the SAT, 
or 21 on the ACT. You just need to meet one of those three academic requirements. And as long as you're living in on-campus housing with us, we have an over $11,000 scholarship award that basically um, awards you the amount in the difference between in-state and out-of-state tuition. Um, so that's a huge difference in between a $32,000 plus dollar price tag and the in-state rate of around $22,000. Um, if you're interested in pursuing admission in the Beaufort College Honors Program, um, we do have an additional $2,000 per academic year award to the students uh, that are accepted and enrolled into the Beaufort College Honors Program. Um, you must reside in on-campus housing uh, to receive that, but it is eligible to be renewed um, up to all four years of attendance uh, as long as you remain a student in uh, full-time status and you maintain the honors uh, GPA criteria. So some next steps for you. Our application is live. So uscb.edu forward slash apply. Uh, we'd love for you to go ahead and get started on that. Um, uh, watch our virtual campus tour. We have uh, a really great resource there. Again, if you just go to the homepage at uscb.edu, you can go ahead and watch uh, and walk through the interactive virtual campus tour there. We are open now for in-person um, tours. So they are uh, limited capacity and socially distanced tours, but we have uh, resumed those. So you can visit our uscb.edu homepage and go to the visit link and you'll be able to see available dates there. Um, so that falls under attend other admissions events. We're in the process of, of planning vir both virtual um, and in-person events uh, going forward in the future. So mo more details to, uh, to come on those. And you can see some other checklist items that we'll be following up with you if you've already started your application as well. So those are gonna be in the forms of going ahead and submitting your FAFSA. Uh, usually it, it becomes available on October 1st uh, to where you can go ahead and start working on that. Um, and then um, all those, completing those early really helps you get into your next steps and makes a very smooth transition through the last remaining steps as far as applying for housing, making sure that you're deposited um, and registered for orientation to, uh, to sign up for classes and be a sand shark. So, I appreciate you all uh, joining my particular portion. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague at USC Upstate, Eric Chapman, and uh, he's going to bring us on home before the questions and answers. All right, let me uh, pull up my PowerPoint for you guys real quick, and uh, we'll get started here. All right, so uh, I'm excited to be able to join you guys this evening. I appreciate you taking all, uh, all your time and, uh, and joining us this evening for this presentation. My name is Eric Chapman. I am our Assistant Director for Freshman Enrollment at USC Upstate, and we're located in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Um, we did just get a verification that uh, Upstate for the second year in a row was ranked number one uh, among public regional colleges in the South. And that's done by the U.S. News and World Report, so we're uh, very excited about that announcement today. Um, we are home to about 6,000 Spartan students and uh, about 29 different states and 14 different nations. So we have uh, a broad spectrum of student population and we are about 47% minority students. So we have students from all uh, different walks of life and uh, opportunity to meet people from all different areas of the, of the state uh, in the United States as well. Uh, we do have about 40 to 100 applicants this past year and that's about average for us. And um, we do have about 18 to 1 student faculty ratio. So that's going to allow you to come in, have a really good sized classroom for you to have interaction with your professors. They're going to know you by name. Uh, you're going to be able to develop a relationship with them and really learn from them uh, and get the attention that you need inside the classroom. Uh, and that's part of, you know, what all three of our campuses are going to be able to offer you uh, compared to what um, like USC would have for you, where you may have, you know, 30,000 students that you're having to deal with um, as well. Um, we do have over 40 different majors and degree programs. Uh, the top ones are going to be nursing, business, and education. Uh, we have a very rapidly growing exercise and sports science program. And then we've added three uh, new programs as well. One of those is cybersecurity. Um, that's new to us this year. One of those is in community health. And then uh, if you were to have been a previous student with us before, you would have had to have majored in business administration and had a concentration in management or finance or accounting. Uh, well, starting this year, you'll actually be able to come to USC Upstate, claim your major as business management, and graduate with a business uh, bachelor's in business management or business accounting or business finance. Um, so you'll actually be able to have those majors specifically 
and not just have to have a concentration in those majors. So that's new for us. And it's going to add five new, uh, essentially, business programs for us at USC Upstate. Um, so that's an exciting addition for us and for our business students. Um, we do have 15 Division I sports program, uh, programs, and we're located in a, a Big South Conference. Um, you know, with this year, if you were coming to our sporting events, a lot of those, unfortunately, have been canceled. But, you know, hopefully coming in 2021, you'll be able to get involved, go to our sporting events, and be part of our uh, sparring at, at, our, at our games and our events. Our freshman class averages are listed below that you will see. These are just averages, um, 3.5 GPA, SAT of 1,000, and ACT of 21. And on the last slide, I'm going to go over uh, admissions and application requirements. So I'll actually go over what our uh, requirements are. The Upstate campus, we do have a very beautiful campus. It's 330 acres. Um, we have a beautiful disc golf course that's runs through campus as well. And we do offer our students 1 million square feet of facility space. Um, one of those uh, newer facilities is the George. Uh, so aptly called, it's our business school in downtown um, Spartanburg. It's in downtown, so you're kind of in the hub where everything is going on. That is a $30 million facility with a state-of-the-art stock market simulation lab, a beautiful art gallery that has millions of dollars of artwork in there that they uh, rotate throughout the year and bring things in. And it's just a really beautiful building um, in downtown Spartanburg. And then we also have our health education complex. That's also where our nursing simulation lab is located. Uh, our nursing simulation lab is one of the largest in the state dedicated only to nursing students. So that doesn't mean that it's the largest simulation lab in the state, but other simulations that, that are larger do usually share those with other uh, degree programs and majors, where the one in Upstate is only for nursing students. So it's the largest one of its kind. Um, and then we do have a pool, a sauna, a hot tub. You know, I, I was a student at Upstate, athlete at Upstate. I love getting out in the pool, uh, using the hot tub, using the steam room. So that's access to not just athletes, but to all student, uh, the whole student body. We've got a weight room, aerobics room, fitness room. So there are opportunities to come in and use those great facilities, but also to make connections um, through aerobics classes in the weight room and things like that. And then we do have freshman housing of the tree houses, which have offer nice modern amenities for all students. Um, they're really new and the rooms are pretty spacious as well um, for what you would get. And then we have beautiful athletics facilities on campus as well. I would encourage you to come out and see us in person if you feel comfortable uh, with everything going on in the pandemic. We are offering tours uh, of our campus right now in person. You know, as Matt mentioned for him, we are limited, but we are keeping social distancing and masks are required. Um, we do also offer the virtual option, but the best way to take in the beauty of our campus is to try to get out there in person. Student Life, we do offer a wide variety of uh, opportunities for our students, including 13 nationally affiliated fraternities and sororities on campus. Uh, so you can get involved in Greek life, intramural sports, 90 different clubs and organizations, um, and as Joe mentioned for Aiken, probably with most of our schools in our camp, in our, um, in our unit, you know, you can create your own major uh, as, I mean, your own uh, organization as well. So we have so many of them. You're bound to find one that you find one you want to get plugged in with. But if you don't, you can take your interest, uh, get an advisor to go in with you, get some friends and create your own club and organization. Uh, and then we have 91 clubs and organizations. So uh, that's exciting for a lot of our students as well. Um, the sporting events that we offer on campus are free to all, student, uh, all students, and a lot of times they give away free t-shirts, free hats, free cups. They've done drawings, um, put in, people in drawings for going to the men's and women's basketball games, uh, for, for things like free book vouchers uh, to even partial tuition um, from when I was a student. So they give out awards just going to support your athletics and do drawings and things like that, but you also have that opportunity to get plugged in with students, be a part of our student section and meet people and make connections on campus. Uh, and then we do offer events all throughout the year. We had a really cool speaker series this year. I don't know uh, if many of you have heard of Colin Powell, but when I was your age, Colin Powell was uh, Secretary of Defense. He was actually supposed to come to campus this year and speak. Um, he didn't get to because of COVID, but we have really uh, cool people come to campus, uh, really prominent figures. Uh, in the world that will come and speak to our students on campus you can go be a part of as a student. Um, and then we offer events like Rocktoberfest and Spring Fest, which are really just big festivals on campus for our students. When it comes to applying for Upstate, you know, our applications are live now. Many of you are probably getting geared up for your college application days this month. If you're in South Carolina, you can apply to us for free for your college application month. Um, you just select college application day waiver at the end of your application. Um, but you'll go to uscupstate.edu to apply. Um, if you don't apply during your app day, 
or if you don't have an SAT fee waiver, um, our application is going to be $45. Um, so that would be required at the end of the application or the submission of your fee waiver. Um, we are required uh, to get your high school transcripts to make a decision, but we are test optional this year, uh, just like Buford and a lot of other schools in the whole, across the United States are. For us, what that means is that you don't have to have your scores to make an admissions decision, but you would have to have a 3.0 GPA on your high school transcript and be in the top 30% for us to admit you without test scores. Now, that would just be for your admissions decision. That wouldn't affect any kind of university scholarships, which you'll need test scores for. And as Matt mentioned previously, for life and hope, any of those state scholarships, you're going to need, you know, you're going to need test scores as well. But for an initial admissions decision, we will be test optional for 2021. Um, so you can submit those to our admissions email, which is admissions with an S at uscupstate.edu. Um, so you can submit those after you apply. And we do have a pretty quick turnaround, about 10 to 12 days to get your admissions decision out um, once we get those materials. If you do have any questions about the admissions process, you know, you can contact me or any of our counselors. I've got my contact information here for you. Um, that text line that's on there, it comes to my phone. Uh, we have a texting app system that we use, but it comes to my phone just like it's a text message. So it does come to my personal cell. So if you need anything, you can text me, ask me questions. Um, I'm really responsive to that uh, throughout the year. We can get pretty busy with phone calls and emails, but text line is always a quick way to get my attention and give me an opportunity to get back in touch with you uh, to give you assistance for that. Uh, and I would like to thank you for your time. And I would like to invite the rest of our panelists back on. And I've listed our contact information for our question and answer session. Yeah, folks, feel free to use the Q&A feature um, on your screen if you have any questions. I know, I think we had one earlier, Joey, I think it was about a quiz bowl. So um, at USCB, uh, we do have a, a psychology quiz bowl team. I know it's been active fairly recently. Um, I don't know if we have like an overall quiz bowl team, but I think Joey hit the nail on the head uh, when he typed the answer earlier. Um, that it's, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly easy and we have our super responsive student life office. So um, if you're, if it's something that you're interested in and competing in, we could definitely look into expanding that as a, uh, as a larger program. But a lot of them are based around individual academic majors. Uh, but again, there are some um, that are general knowledge uh, university wide. Yeah, I think we all touched base on this, but I think that's one of the beautiful things about the the size of our campuses and just the vibrant student life is you, if, if there's something that you really want to do that you're really passionate about, uh, we want to help you do that. So, you know, we all have a, a nice wide variety of uh, opportunities, clubs and organizations that our students have the opportunity to participate in. Uh, but if you want to start something, let's start something. Uh, you know, we're here for you. Uh, we want to be able to, to kind of just take care of you and uh, you know, offer things for you like that. But does anybody else have any questions they want to drop into the chat box? Hey, we have one, um, let's see here. This one's for uh, Eric. Uh, does Upstate offer additional scholarship money if you have Palmetto or Life State scholarships? So the scholarships that we offer, if you're all or especially if you're qualifying for the Palmetto Scholarship, you know, you're more than likely going to qualify for one of our merit-based scholarships. There's not a separate application for those. Um, you're automatically considered if you qualify, and those will um, need test scores and your uh, GPA. So their GPA, class rank, and test score base, all three requirements will need to be met. Those range from $2,000 at the bottom uh, with our Dean Scholarship all the way up to the Chancellor Scholarship, which would offer $10,000 a year. Now, the Chancellor Scholarships, um, Pretty, pretty hard to get because it does require 29 ACT, 3.75 GPA, and to be in the top 10% of your class. So, but if you do meet those requirements, $10,000 a, a year uh, will go a long way towards your tuition costs. And then at the bottom end of that, our, our entry level university scholarship is a 3.0 uh, GPA or higher, top 30% of your class, just like our entrance requirements. But the test scores are where uh, students have the hardest time meeting to get that money, which would be a 24 ACT, or an 1100 SAT. Um, so we do have other options to help you out. And then we do, do have 80% uh, of our student body receives some sort of financial aid, whether it be grants, loans, 
um, those sorts of things. And we offered uh, just over $50 million in financial aid awards this year. So there's plenty of aid out. So I think this is a really good question. Um, so what are, and we'll each have a turn at this one. I think we have, we have about six minutes left. What are you all looking for in applicants? Um, is it high GPA, high test scores, extracurriculars, et cetera? So uh, we'll, we'll all uh, take a turn on that one. As far as with USCB, um, I mean, we're focusing on how well you perform in the classroom, especially with so many uh, SAT and ACT test dates that have been canceled and everything. Um, when we say we're test optional this year, um, for admissions purposes, uh, consider it we are not factoring in your test scores um, at all. Now, if you have very strong test scores, if you happen to be able to get a test date in, then yes, that will help your chances if the GPA might be a little bit off. But um, if you do submit scores or you don't submit scores, um, they can't hurt you, uh, basically. Now, that's for this academic year. Um, but so we're going to focus on your academic performance in the classroom. Extracurriculars, those are things, those are great uh, to participate in and they will uh, pay dividends in the future. Um, I, we won't necessarily penalize students that weren't active as active um, in high school at the same time. We're focusing on your academic GPA and uh, how well you performed on those uh, uh, in the classroom. So very, very similar to what Matt was talking about, you know, we're, we're going to be looking at um, your really heavy, your transcript is if, we're, you know, Aiken specifically is going to be test optional as well. Like most every school is probably going to be this coming year. Uh, so your transcript is our biggest piece that we're going to be able to go off of. Uh, for me, I'm looking at, you know, the holistic review, you know, I want to see what classes you were taking, you know, are you, you want to be a, uh, you come in and do pre-med with us or pre-vet. What kind of, how did you do in your science classes? You know, I'm looking at these, did you push yourself your, your junior uh, and senior years? Uh, you know, did you fall off the wagon? You know, but also we're looking at, I'm trying to look at other things too. You know, we're going to be looking at the GPA and class rank, but you know, if you're not meeting that kind of area that we want to be in, I want to know why. You know, I'm going to look at, oh, well, maybe you didn't do so hot your freshman year and you're like, you had that kind of come to Jesus moment and you're just like, you know what? I need to do something with my life. And then you picked it up since then, and your transcript shows that. Uh, maybe you just had a life event that happened uh, your sophomore year, and your freshman, but then your junior and senior look really strong. You know, I'm going to take a lot of that into consideration. I'm trying to find a good fit. I want students to be able to come here and be successful here. I want you to come here and stay here and grow here and be a part of our family. Um, and so, you know, looking for that good fit is more important to me uh, and us than anything else. Yeah, and I think um, both some other other panelists here covered it pretty much um, as far as like what overall what we're looking for to, from, from a successful student and to have a successful experience. But from us upstate in particular, we are really just going to look at your GPA and your class rank for your admissions requirements. Now, if you do submit test scores and you have had test scores in the past uh, and you don't quite meet those requirements, we, we can, like if somebody has a 3.5 GPA, and they're in the top 30% of their class and they made an 18 on the ACT and we require a 19, that doesn't mean that we won't admit you. More than likely you're gonna be able to be admitted because we're gonna look at your track record as a student, that you do have a solid GPA, that you do show success in the classroom and we'll be able to meet you without meeting minimum test score requirements. Those test score requirements are there because um, those show success in the classroom in the past and from six students that have come through and graduated. Um, but that doesn't mean that you, if you don't meet those minimum requirements, that we won't be able to make an uh, admissions decision for you and have you become a Spartan. All right, I think we have time for one more. Um, do all of your campuses offer co-op programs for students to work with actual companies and gain work experience? So I think we have an internship question here. So that is, uh, again, with USCB, my institution in particular, uh, we do pride ourselves on experiential learning uh, for our students. So internships uh, are a very big part of that. 
Um, uh, just to highlight a few of our majors, again, hospitality management with our partnerships on Hilton Head Island. Um, so if you're interested in world-class resorts, over 10, 2 million people um, every year um, visit the Sea Islands of South Carolina. So it's a great um, uh, location for that type of thing. Nurses work at, uh, working with trauma level hospitals during the clinicals and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna turn it over to my colleagues to uh, finish this out. So yeah, real quick, I just I know we're right at time. So uh, the answer for that is, for us is definitely yes. Uh, we are very much experimental learning as well. Uh, we want you to be out there in the class, not outside the classroom learning, gain that experience. Most every single one of our majors has that built into their, um, their academic bulletin and part, it's part of their curriculum. Yeah, and to close out, same thing for us. We uh, definitely want you to get hands on learning and we want to create transformative opportunities for our students. And we are able to do that through creating experiences for you to network. Um, get hands on learning and get out there in the field and learn from people who have been doing it for a long time and help you make those connections and get that experience. All right. Well, that will conclude this particular session for this evening. We thank you for joining us. After you close your window, a very quick four question survey should appear and we encourage you to fill that item out. Also, sign up for more sessions that may be of interest to you. As mentioned before, a full schedule of the offerings is available at the CACRO website at cacro.org. A recording will be available for this particular session, and it will also be housed on the CACRO website. And lastly, take care and have a wonderful evening.